Welcome back, guys. I hope you guys are having a fantastic Labor Day. Let's go ahead and jump into it. <clears throat> Last video, I mixed some stuff up. I apologize for that. I have been running low on sleep. I have not been taking care of myself. Um, and you know what? Shout out to uh, Diana and Aspen, uh, my fiance and little girl. Honestly, ever since they went to Portugal to see their side of the family and I stayed back to work, I've been a mess. I've honestly been a mess. Um, I am so used to uh, having a meal in the morning, having a meal when I get home after work, uh, coming home to a clean, tidy house, um, you know, not even worrying about our animals, the dogs, the, the bearded dragon, um, literally putting myself to sleep, having a curfew. I mean, she reminds me to go to bed. She'll come in to the living room if I'm playing video games late at night and she'll be like, baby, like it's, it's time to go to bed. Like I've been staying up till like three, four in the morning, just playing call of duty. So I just like, I'm not sleeping right. Last night I think was just the, it was the reality check. Last night I got a really, really intense uh, migraine. Uh, my stomach started flipping upside down. I started getting really sweaty. I tried to take a shower and cool off and, and refresh, but it just didn't work. I ended up forcing myself to go to sleep at like 10 o'clock at night uh, with a cold pack just sitting on my head because I my head felt like it was going to explode, probably from too much uh, loud exposure to sounds um, like Call of Duty, you know, explosions, gunfire, um, and then just being sucked glued to a TV all day. Um, I need to mow the grass. I have errands to run. I got to pick up dog food. Like there's just... I'm just not, I'm not living right. So I just want to apologize guys, uh, because I, I should be trying to get back to a regular schedule. So today I decided, you know what, we're going to make another video today and we're going to try and make up for yesterday and we're going to focus solely on Stellar Crown and the sleepers of Stellar Crown. Sorry for burdening you guys with my, uh, with my life problems. Anyways. Okay. Let's get into it. Uh, right now I'm looking at the visual set list. You can find the visual set list on justinbasil.com. If you're new to the hobby, that's super helpful. Uh, if you're not new to the hobby, then you already know this is a great uh, website. He's always putting this stuff out weeks before we even see the set. So looking at, sometimes I look at the set at just the commons and uncommons. Um, and honestly, they're stunning. I mean, I don't give enough credit to the artists uh, for everything they've done, but this set, just the grass types, like thinking about the first binder page of this set, you've got the Venusaur EX, you've got the Lediba, the Ledian Hollow, which we're going to talk about that illustration rare. I do feel like the, the Ledian illustration rare is kind of a sleeper. I also am a huge fan of the Ledian. I think he's really, really cool looking. Uh, and just like ladybugs in general are just awesome. Uh, they're the, they're the, the one like insect that everybody loves when they land on them. Um, okay, and then you've got a Celebi art in here that's really, really cool. A Leap, a Cradley, um, a bunch of other artworks that don't stand out as much to me. They're awesome artworks. It's just really more or less the Pokemon that don't stand out to me as much. Um, going down the line here, not too much else that I noticed in the fire types. Then we get the water types. You got Blastoise. You got the beautiful Lapras there. You got the Meryl and the Azumarill. You got the Greninja, which... I get that Greninja is a starter technically, so like that's probably why the Greninja EX was so hyped up. I feel like if Greninja EX, if that SIR was not a starter, I don't know, maybe it wouldn't have been as hyped up, but yeah, some awesome artwork here. We get into the electric types. I know that that Gargantula or that, that Tarantula essentially, um, I'm trying to remember what the little, um, Boltic, I think it's like a little tick that's that's electric. I, I'm trying to remember the names of these because obviously on Justin Basil, all of these are in Japanese. So I'm going off my limited Gen One through Three knowledge, um, and I'm still learning all the Pokemon names. I still there's still so many that I don't that I couldn't remember off the top of my head. Um, we get that that Mewtwo artwork is really really good, uh, even though it's not a special card. Okay. Um, Let's see, anything else here in the uncommons comment section? No, not really. Nothing you really feel like worth mentioning. Okay, we're going to go ahead. There's a nice little Jirachi art. Um, but yeah, a lot of binder filler in there. We have the walking wake at the end there. We got a uh, regular hollow walking wake. I just don't like that walking wake. I don't think I'm ever going to like 
those uh, legendary dog kind of dinosaur prehistoric versions. I just don't really like those evolution lines at all. Um, that's just me though. Okay. So the colorless, the colorless spots, uh, Eevee, amazing. The, uh, the Noctow Hollow looks awesome. I'm excited for that promo. The Tauros, the Tauros, I love Tauros, but this Tauros artwork, uh, in the comment section, uh, it's awesome. Uh, going down here, nothing else I really care to mention. I'm sure we're going to have some valuable trainers in there. Um, okay. Into the illustrations. Okay. The sleepers that I think are going to be uh, defining this set and really uh, creating a lot of value. I've already looked at the eBay sales. I've been looking at the sold listings and the listings that are up currently for Stellar Crown. We've got some very pricey uh, Terra, Terra style SIRs in there. But other than that, uh, considering that the set hasn't officially released yet, um, people have only gotten pre-release product or they've, or they just have a connection and they've got product early. Um, right now the prices I feel like are really reasonable for these cards. Like it's what I would expect. It's like 10, 15, $20 cards for most of the illustrations. Now, what we've learned as history repeats itself is that some of the illustrations in these sets just go bonkers. They're super tough to grade. They're conditionally, uh, I guess rare in that sense, even though, I feel like we shouldn't use the term conditionally rare for cards that have just been printed, but yeah, you're going to have cards that just have, uh, are all over the place with centering and card quality. Uh, so I feel like there's going to be some illustrations in here that are going to absolutely dominate. I think it's pretty obvious too. I think most people think the exact same thing. Okay. We had the Charmander promo, at least in English, we had the Charmander promo thrown into the Obsidian Flames ETB, which was a while back now. So it's kind of weird how Stellar Crown is kind of pulling together the other starters, even though we got the Charmander way long ago. Um, I think a really good play for someone uh, and I think there were people out there, I think at least two or three friends of mine who were like, okay, this Charmander is just, it's, um, it's a uh, foreshadowing, right? It's, they're going to give us the other evolution lines. We might even get all the evolution lines and illustrations. That would be really neat. Um, but everybody loves Kanto. Everybody loves Gen 1. Don't at me. You've got the Bulbasaur and you've got the Squirtle. And a lot of people coming back to the hobby are going to go bonkers for those two cards. And then when you add the fact, if you've been sitting on your Obsidian Flames uh, promo Charmanders or even Pokemon Center uh, Charmanders, it's going to go really, really good with the Bulbasaur and the Squirtle. And you're going to have people trying to sell this set as a premium. Uh, and shout out to Derek. Derek actually put this idea in my head. But he's absolutely right. I do think we're going to see a premium for people trying to sell the entire set of all three graded in a PSA 10. That's going to look awesome. Um, I also think there's going to be a slight premium for people selling it as a set, even raw. Uh, but you've got the Bulbasaur, uh, which I will, um, I will show you guys all of these individually. Let me, uh, turn my screen around, but I want to show you guys these. Uh, and kind of have them large on the screen. I was just going to add these to the video, but honestly, I feel like it's better just to show you guys exactly what I'm looking at when I'm looking at it. Uh, the Bulbasaur is phenomenal. I think if this card is tough to grade, there's going to be, a, people are going to be grading this card nonstop. So I feel like the pop is going to be crazy on the Bulbasaur and the Squirtle. But again, if we get a situation like we had with the Groudon, with the uh, Magikarp, with I guess Raichu as well from Pal they Evolved, I mentioned that yesterday, but I point these out because they're the examples that I think of when I think of kind of Gen 1 through 3 Pokemon that I idolize, that I would love to have in my collection. That Paradox Rift Groudon is definitely one of them, um, <clears throat> as well as the Altaria. Um, but anyways, we've seen this. Time and time again now, some of these illustrations fetch a huge premium in PSA 10. Um, again, the best example we have, really more or less, I guess, because it was the same illustrator as the uh, the Giratina, the Giratina um, alt art from Lost Origin. Uh, the same illustrator, I think, did the uh, the Magikarp from Paldea Evolved. So I think you know that was more or less. People really, really love that illustrator. Uh, that artist, so maybe that card popped off for that reason as well as just it was just tough to grade. 
but we can see that again. These arts are awesome. No, it's not the same art style, but it is, it's incredible. Okay. You get a night, you get a little view, a little perspective into someone's kitchen, which is really cute. They've got some plants, some succulents. They got their little teapot there. You got Pidgey flying in the window, which ties things together with the Charmander. You kind of know that these are meant to be together when the Pidgeys are around Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle. I, I haven't looked at the Squirtle close up yet, but I'm pretty sure Squirtle has some uh, Pidgeys in there too. Um, and then let's look at the Ledium. The Ledium is a beautiful card. It's nighttime, there's stars in the sky, he's flying above. I think this card is gonna look really good in the illustration um, style. So the Ledian, I think, is going to pop off low-key. I just think that's a really strong artwork. I like it. It's simple, but it's good. So the Ledian, I think, uh, could potentially uh, be a sleeper. Hold on. My computer is doing something weird, guys. Okay. Back here now. All right, let's click on the Lilip. So the Little Leap is pretty cool too. Now the thing is with the Little Leap, I don't think people are gonna be as big of a fan of this card. I do think it's an awesome artwork. Um, if it is uh, tough to grade, that could be a factor. But again, I don't think a lot of people care about the Little Leap. It kind of blends in to the uh, artwork a little bit. Oh no, focus. It blends into the artwork a little bit. So I think it's kind of, it takes away some of the focus from the actual Pokemon. Um, it's an awesome artwork. Um, it looks like someone kind of in a cramped apartment that just puts all of their money towards their terrarium for their Lilip. I don't know. That's what this looks like to me. It looks like somebody who's just like crazy about this one Pokemon, just like somebody would be crazy about having their one pet. This is an awesome, uh, room. It's an awesome artwork. And, uh, that one's pretty cool. Now looking at these other ones let's look at the squirtle uh now the score bunny evolution that one could could be dope but i feel like people still don't appreciate those starters as much as they appreciate stuff like gen one through three starters again might be uh an unpopular opinion you guys know i'm a i, I like the og stuff um, but yeah here we've got the pidgeys again you've got uh squirtle splashing around on someone's deck Looks pretty cool. And again, I think it's gonna go really well with the other ones. Uh, really cool, simple, fun artwork. Show this guy to you. So again, I think Bulbasaur and Squirtle alone are gonna be working to define this set. I know a lot of you are gonna be like, no, like how could you not like the SIRs? Guys, everybody's entitled to their opinion. I'm just giving you mine. Um, but I look at the full arts and I'm like, yep, pass other than Metachamp. And honestly, I don't even care for Metachamp that much. Um, don't like the waifu character rares that much. You've got the, the Apple, I can't even remember Flapple, Appleton. I can't even remember what that evolution is called, but you've got that SIR. You've got the Gargantula. I think that's what it's called. The, the electric Tarantula SIR with the Terra crown. That one actually looks okay. Uh, you've got the fish Terra. That looks, that one looks okay. I'm going to show you guys all these. And you got the Dash and Terra, uh, or just the, the regular Dash. And I think SIRs look best when they're focused on the actual specific Pokemon without anything else distracting from the design, like Terra Crowns or VMAXs. I really wish they put Terra Crowns and VMAXs. I really wish they did that. Um, I wish they put Terra Crowns and VMAXs, uh, in just like regular EXs, or maybe they did it in just the illustrations and they left the SIRs uh, completely up to just seeing the actual Pokemon, just the Pokemon, nothing else distracting from that. I wanna hear what you guys think about that. Do you think, no, I think the Terra Crowns, that's kind of the ultimate mega form of the Pokemon um, in a way, uh, you know, it's hype whenever you use the Terra Crowns in the game to boost your Pokemon stats. It's really, really dope. So maybe it fits right in with the SIRs, but I just feel like they should have, left the SIRs to just being the Pokemon themselves. And then they could have put the Terra Crowns uh, in the illustrations or in the full art. They're doing it in the full art. So just stick to doing that in the full art. Um, but anyways, yeah. So for me, guys, there's not even an SIR here that I care about. Um, there's some these gold cards. Uh, the promo Noctowl. I thought that was an SIR for a second. The promo Noctowl is 
I think the better than anything else in the set. I think the, the, the knock towel would have been great. Now we will talk about this Zero Aura. Uh, the Zero Aura is really, really good. And it's might be the strongest illustration in terms of everything it's got going on. Um, I actually saw this from Pokey Plumber. He, he posted this card. I didn't even realize this card was in the set. And this card is definitely a strong point for the set. Um, let's see. And I mean, all these illustrations are good. They're all good. They're just not something I think is going to be a, a focus uh, of the set. Um, let's look at the Zero Aura. This is awesome. This thing is insane looking. Insane looking. This could be one of the stronger cards of the sets. And honestly, I am a fan of Zero Aura. It's one of my more li it's one of my more liked newer Pokemon. I think it looks really really cool. And again, guys, sorry, I could just pop stuff up on the screen and do an overlay, but I've got a lot of stuff, a lot of errands I got to run today. So I'm just like, bear with me. Uh, it's got the purple, it's got the pink, it's got the blue, it's got all these vibrant colors. He's almost coming out at you, which is very uh, reminiscent to me of like gold star artwork. I like how his arm is almost coming out of the picture frame. Um, and then on top of that, you can just see how fast he's moving with all the lines and the streaks going behind him. Um, and the electricity around him, I mean, that blue electricity, I mean, the, the artwork here is, it really is incredible. It deserves praise. And if it's tough to grade, this card could be really good. I think the Zero Aura is like $15 right now, raw. Um, I kind of like the Gulpin and I don't know why. I can't explain it. I don't know why I like this card, but I just do. I think it embodies all of our snacking habits. I think all of us could use a piece of cake every now and again. I just like that one. Um, the Metatite. The Metatite is a really incredible artwork. He's, me he's Metatite. He's meta he's Metatiting. He's Metatiting on a tree, on a vine. Uh, you've got that, that, uh, I forget what that, uh, that parrot in the background, that parrot Pokemon, I forget what that one's called. Like I said, I can't remember all the names off the top of my head. Um, we've got a beautiful river, a beautiful waterfall in the background. I mean, this is everything that I love about modern artwork is seeing the detail and seeing them out in the wild and seeing this uh, forested background. That's my favorite thing. That's why I love the Nido King from 151, which we still haven't pulled, but I love when they have like a forested background. I think that's like my favorite uh, kind of art style. But yeah, the Metatite, as you guys can see, it's an incredible artwork, focusing on that. It's a really, really nice artwork. I think it deserves uh, some love. But again, wouldn't buy into the set just for that one card. Wouldn't buy into the set for the Bulbasaur and the Squirtle. But again, I will buy into the set if people are not cautious about buying into the set. Like if people are just gung-ho about Pokemon sealed investing, then the market has spoken. I still think it's risky, but if people want to keep investing in sealed products, I'm I'm going to be on that um I'm going to be on that wave too. I just have to be really, really tactical about the sets I want to invest in the future because we are saving for a new home. And amongst that, I'm still trying to complete my other big collection goals, which has really put a it's really thrown a wrench in any of my modern collection goals because like it makes it much harder. I feel like for a lot of people to relate with me because I'm going after very specific cards that are, you know, 20 plus years old. Um, or almost 20 years old of the EX era stuff, uh, not so much. Um, but uh, I'm going after really specific cards, so I'm not as able to focus on modern stuff. But give me a really crazy good set, and I will. I think 151 really piqued my interest. And other than buying a set to sell it later on uh, and just have one or two boxes of it afterwards, there's not, I just don't see a lot of sets here that I see the full potential. I think. When I came back into the hobby COVID time, my, my, my goal, my overall goal was to try and collect every single set from, you know, pretty much, I would say from like sun and moon, because it's still pretty affordable to buy every box of sun and moon, um, sun and moon all the way through sword and shield, then through scarlet and violet. But I got pretty burnt out financially just wasn't as feasible to try and collect one of every box. Um, I have almost one of every vintage box. I'm missing EX Dragon. That's the only box that I don't have. Um, 
But um, trying to collect every set, it's just really, really tough, and it's very expensive, and I don't know. I think I might pivot back over to trying to collect every single set once I get my bigger collection goals over, but I love the cards that I'm collecting specifically right now so much that I think I'm still probably going to continue looking for those cards to add more of them to my collection because I do think that they're going to do really well in the long term. Uh, whereas a lot of modern stuff, I love it. I love it. I do want to collect it. I would love to go to the store and pick up some of these illustrations uh, from people opening from their packs so that I'm not paying, I'm not spending a bunch of money opening product. Um, but I'm really putting all my focus and energy towards um, other life priorities and then my grail cards. Um, but okay, guys. Um, yeah, I'm going to put, put up all these illustrations right here just to remind you guys again of all the illustrations in this set. It's really not stacked. It's really not stacked. So while I think people might have fun opening this set, for me, it's kind of a pass. And I'm, I'm going to be shocked, guys. I'm going to be absolutely shocked if this set really does do numbers and people are clearly fans of Stellar Crown. I'm going to be shocked because it just, to me, there isn't much in here um, that piques my interest. Anyways, guys, sorry if you kind of expected that from me. Um, and sorry about yesterday mixing up uh, my sets. Um, people have been talking about Surging Sparks so much that I honestly completely blanked out there. Um, but uh, I'm ex I think I, I think I should we should be excited for Surging Sparks. I think that's going to be a, a better set than Stellar Crown for sure, comparing just those two sets. But Stellar Crown could be good with the Squirtle and the Bulbasaur. It could be good. We just don't know. And if it's not a really popular set, maybe they don't print as much of it. Um, maybe it becomes like a low printed set. That's possible. Also kind of highly unlikely with Scarlet and Violet era, they're printing a crap ton, um, of cards now. So yeah. Anyways, let me know what you guys think of Stellar Crown. Let me know what your favorite illustrations are and why. And let me know if you like the SIRs, if you're a big fan of the Terra Crown style SIRs and why you like those so much. Uh, is it because of playing the game? Do you just like the style? Do you think Pokemon did a good job there? Uh, let me know. And if you're into the trainers or character rares or waifu, let me know as well. Because that, you know, people could be really, really into those. Um, these special illustration rare supporters. So let's look at all the special illustrations. I think I, I, think I got to do that before calling it. Um, but here are all the SIRs. Really not a lot of SIRs, so not sure how it's going to create a ton of value. Um, but yeah, not a lot of options here. Definitely want to hear what you guys think. That being said, got a bunch of errands to run today. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you guys, and I'm going to try my best to take care of myself and um, make some solid content tomorrow. Anyways, peace, guys. Thanks.